Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday morning, June the 26th, 2018. Welcome to the morning routine. This is episode number 377. And as you can see, I am not in my home office. Yes, I am downtown Chi Town, the Windy City, the great Chicago, hanging out here for a couple of days. And we're live at 548 Chicago time, 648 East Coast time. And it's so good to see you. Right behind me on my one side, I can't tell if it's left or right. Uh, on the on the camera, but is the fountain from Married with Children, and on the other corner near the edge is the Sears Tower standing up tall, and the sun is rising over the lake right now, which is shining, blasting off of these buildings over here. It's a beautiful morning here. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you recall that one year ago, right about now, I was here, same exact place, sitting in this little cafe in Grant Park, and uh, they're closed. No coffee to sip this morning because nobody's open yet at 5.40 to serve me a cup of joe. So uh, we're going coffeeless, but it is gorgeous. There is a lot of noise. These seagulls are very rowdy in the morning. I don't know like what's going on, but they are definitely exuberant about this Tuesday that we're about to share. So go, go seagulls, you know? So uh, anyways, thanks for being here this morning on The Morning Routine. It's always uh, fun to join with you guys on your morning or during your day. A lot of people watch it around lunchtime, so I hope your lunch is going well, you know, if that's what's happening. So, But uh, I do have some stories for you today, guys. Why don't we just jump right into some stories. The first story that I've got to share with you has to do with a million dollar lottery ticket. Yes, what would you do if you found a winning million dollar lottery ticket? Not bought it, found it. What would you do? Hmm. Great question. Kevin, that is a nice backdrop. I hand painted it myself, even with the moving seagulls and parts. Not quite true. But anyways, a fa listen to this. In Kansas, in March, Andy Patel was behind the counter at a gas station in Salina where a customer came in to have, uh, to have three lottery uh, tickets checked. After checking the first two non-winners, Andy let the customer leave before remembering to check the third. He eventually realized a third ticket had been left behind and he still checked it. Ba-boom, million dollar winning ticket. Yes, he's got the million dollar, customer's gone and thinks no, nothing. What happens? The guy drives to where he thinks the man lives, to the neighborhood of where he thinks this guy comes from because he's been into the store before, but couldn't identify his home by the customer's vehicles. He was about to give up and return to the store when he spotted the customer driving out of the neighborhood. After following in his car, he eventually stopped the man, showed him that he won a million dollars, and of course, the dude was excited. So talk about awesome, right? The guy says it felt good to find it and then to find them. Isn't that stinking awesome, man? That's so cool. What a gift to give. Imagine he got the joy of giving somebody a million dollars, basically. He knows what it feels like to hand somebody a million dollars. So awesome. Good for him, man. Great story. I love that. The uh, next story that I have for you this morning, this one comes out of the hustle, it has to do with a store that uh, we don't frequent often, but there's times when we do. But yes, five below. The store five to below. Why? How? How does this store exist in the world of retail collapses, right? It's, it sells cheap stuff. How does it? Well, listen, here we go. Five Below, the discount store that sells Cyclops Knot and Fairy Toots for under $5 is up 21.9% in one week. Profits across 650 locations are 129% higher than this time last year. The company plans to open another 125 new stores. How can this be at the age of Toys R Us and utter collapse and just, they're gone? Five Below success shows brick and mortar is alive and well in the age of e-commerce. Five Below items are 50% less expensive than similar products on Amazon. But by doubling down on the stupid crap, really, let's just say it, I said that word, I said crap this early in the morning, is how they are succeeding amazingly between slime and squishy and mermaid stuff, and like they said, what is it, unicorn snot, whatever it might be, right? For $1.50, when you could buy zombie drool slime for a buck fifty, how can you resist? This is how they're doing so much great. I said to a friend yesterday, I said, my problem is I'm always trying to think of brilliant, brilliant uh, um, products, you know, that will make game. People don't want brilliance for the most part. They want stupid and silly. And this is five below success. So 
I think it's awesome that they were gutsy enough to hang their entire empire of Five Below stores on whether people would buy snot or not. That's awesome. That should be a slogan, snot or not. I should, I should tell them. Anyways, one last story I have for you guys this morning. This is out of Slate.com. This has to do with voter right change in Ohio. This is kind of interesting. I, I, you know, we don't get into politics very often. We cover some headlines here and there, but we don't really dive into it. And we're not going to start that today. It could be very divisive, and, and uh, that's not what we're about. Uh, but listen, let me just read some, some, some points to this to you, okay? In a 5-4 to four decision handed down, the Supreme Court ruled that states may purge voters from the rolls due to their failure to cast a ballot. So if you haven't voted, they can purge you as a, as a, uh, a voter, which means that if you showed up at an election not knowing, you wouldn't be able to vote at that election because you've been purged. This is very interesting. Because of this decision, it is now likely that thousands of Americans will, well, here, I just said this, will show up at the polls in 2018 hoping to cast a ballot, only to be told that they have been purged from the polls, uh, uh, from the rolls, because they skipped the past few elections. A federal law passed in 1993 uh, to prohibit any state from removing a registrant from the federal roll by reason of the person's failure to vote has now been changed. Barring states, uh, this was a barring it, a use it or lose it policy. Now, Ohio has figured out a workaround. What they're saying now in this article, and you can read all these articles at themorningroutine.live to get more accuracy and more information, because I'm just covering a little snippets, okay? Uh, but what they're saying is, listen, we're gonna send them out a mailing. If they don't return the mailing, then that means they must have moved. If they didn't vote and they didn't answer a mailing, they must have moved, so we're going to take them off the polls. And this is the way that they uh, get a workaround on the idea of that you're not allowed to just take them off the rolls just for not using it. Like, that's not, you're not allowed to do that, but you're allowed to take them off if they're no longer in your district. And this is how they're going to do it. So, which is kind of sneaky, I think, you know? Ohio does not purge voters based on their failure to vote. Instead, Ohio treats the failure to return a notice and the failure to vote as evidence the re uh, registrant has moved. Very curious. I would check this article out to get more information on it. So morningroutine.live. So, but that's the articles I have for you this morning. A little quick this morning since I'm on the road, you know. And uh, but let's let's jump on over to some Google Trends here. The top ten most searched things yesterday on Google. Number one, the word restaurants. Again, the word restaurants is ranking. This has happened like two or three weeks ago. Over two million searches. Now the little snippet here says San Francisco restaurants can't afford waiters, so they're putting diners to work. I don't know what that is, but it's Google worthy. You might want to Google restaurants when we're done. Number two, Richard Harrison comes in at number two. He is the guy from Pawn Stars, the, the, the grandfather of Pawn Stars. He has passed away at age 77. Number three, Iran, Iran versus Portugal at soccer. Number four, NBA awards. Number five, Heather Locklear. Haven't heard that name in a long time. Heather Locklear, wow. Number six, uh, six, Maxine Waters. I don't know who she is. Number seven, Spain versus Morocco, soccer. Number eight, Wayne Newton is ranking. Number nine, Michael Jackson is ranking right behind Wayne Newton. And number 10, Uruguay versus Russia a little more soccer trending. So that's the top 10 most searched things on Google yesterday. Let's jump forward, guys. Slow things down just a hair and soak in a passage of wisdom this morning. Today's passage of wisdom is quite simple, but it's pretty awesome if you can actually read this passage and actually make this request your own. Not just read it and see it. But think about, wow, can I really submit to what this says? Here we go. The passage is Psalm 119, verse 133. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Wow. It's so simple. But yet it can be so immense when you think about it. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Right? God, help guide me with your word and direct my footsteps in the right path, the way that you want me to go. But let no sin rule over me. No, not big sins, no sin. Can you imagine? Wow, have no sin rule. There's a quote I have here from Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters 
cannot be trusted with important matters. And I wonder if that relates to, uh, to what this says, where it says, let no sin roll over me. If we allow small sins, if we're going to grade them, and sin is sin, so let's get that clear, but if we're going to grade, if we're going to let small sins rule over us and let them rule over us, wow, are we protected against big sins? Or are we weakened against the big ones? You know, I, I don't know. Like I said, all sin, sin is sin, but you know what I'm saying. So, uh, I don't know. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Powerful. So, guys, let's pray. Let's get this day started. Father, good morning. Father, we thank you for this gorgeous Tuesday morning and uh, the sunrise coming up over the water, shining on the buildings. Just another sign of your immense, dramatic creation. Father, we love how powerful you are. We were reminded this week at, in the at church how powerful you are and immense that you could create all this, but yet you're so close that you love each and every one of us in an intimate way. Father, be with us today. Protect us. Help guide our feet according to your word and protect us from all sin, even the ones that we think are little and are meaningless. Father, we love you and we thank you for your grace and your strength and your love. Amen. And that, my friends is a magnificent wrap to today's morning routine. Thanks for being here this morning in Chicago. I appreciate it. I will be here, I think, one more day. I don't know if I'll be in this spot or where I'll be. We will see tomorrow. But until tomorrow, don't you forget that today, this very day, is a perfect opportunity for you to be exactly who you were meant to be. I love you guys. Have a great day.